Okay guys, um, welcome to a new video, and in this video we're going to start talking about um, electronic structures in materials and how we can think about them and understand them and um, understand how different materials conduct or don't conduct electricity. So on Monday we talked about energy bands and energy bands as a function of the atomic radius or the, the radius between two atoms. So if I have one atom and I have a second atom, R is the distance between those two atoms. And we found that if we, um, if that distance is very far away, we have different shells that the electrons like to sit in. And these are shells in a single atom. So shell one and shell two. So I'll just call this one and I'll just call this one two. And what happens is because of the Pauli exclusion principle, as the atoms get closer to one another, as R decreases, the um, bands or the shells where the electrons can be in kind of split off into these bands. So instead of being a single energy, it's uh, they have they can be in places where their energy is kind of spread out. And so depending on the atomic radius, we can observe different things. So if um, the atoms are, let's say, at this location, I'm going to call this um, location A. So at A, if, if the um, radius, I'm going to call this R sub A, this is the atomic uh, distance um, that corresponds to this location or this region. We have these points that we can kind of define where the bands are. So that's point little, so little a, little b, little c, and little d. And if we look at the bands in a simplified form, we'd see that this is point little a, this is point little b, this is point little c, and this is point little d. Or little d. Now there are two conditions that can occur. One of them is that this band is full of electrons. Okay, if that band is full of electrons and this band up here is empty, what you need to do is you need to get an electron from this band to jump from this band up into here to get it to conduct because the electrons can't move around if the band is full. Think of a crowded room, people can't move around very easily, but if you move into an empty room, the electron can move around very freely in that empty space. And for a material that has um, this full band on the bottom and an empty band on top, if there's a distance between the two bands, we call this the Fermi energy. If the Fermi energy is greater than two electron volts, this material is an insulator. Which means that it won't conduct electricity. Now what if, instead of having a full shell between C and D, what if we have a partially filled shell? So this is one condition with the full shell, but an, another condition is that we have an empty shell and then on the bottom the shell 1 isn't completely filled. It's only partially filled. 
and this part is empty. And this region is also empty. What happens is that the electrons don't need much energy at all. There's no jumping required. There's no band gap or Fermi energy to overcome in order to promote an electron into that conduction band. And therefore, the energy required to uh, allow the material to conduct is very, very small. And so when we see a configuration like this, with uh, a shell that is only partially filled, this material is a conductor. So these materials are metals, typically. So metals, it's very easy to get an electron to be promoted from the full region of an unfilled shell into an empty region of that same unfilled shell. Okay, so now what if we take a look at another location? I'm going to call this location B, where the atomic radius is closer together. This is little sub A, little sub B, little sub C, and little sub D. At B, we'd see something very, very similar as to what we saw in A, where B is completely filled, and uh, sorry, the, the lower one is completely filled, the upper one is completely empty. Now granted, you can have the uh, lower shell incompletely filled, and you'd still have a conductor. Um, but if you have this condition, and this distance right here, or the energy, the Fermi energy, if it is less than 2 electron volts, this material is what we call a semiconductor. So semi means sort of, <laughs> sort of conducting. What this means is that we can easily turn the conduction capability of a, this particular material on or off depending on how we stimulate it. And stimulating mean applying a large voltage or applying heat, we can change it from being a conductor to being an insulator. So semiconductor just means it can be either an insulator or conductor, depending on the conditions of the material or, or the, the surroundings. Now there's a third option or a third scenario. I'm going to call this C, where there is even closer the two atoms are. And in this condition, we see overlap between the two different um, the two different shells. So this would be one shell, and there is no band gap between the two different shells. There's actually overlap. So there's no Fermi energy, there's no energy to overcome. And if the bottom shell is then completely full, what we see is something very similar to what we saw before between um, full and empty regions in a conductor, and that is that the empty region is immediately adjacent to the full region, and therefore it is incredibly easy to get an electron to jump from this full region up into this conducting region. And this is also a conductor. So very similar to the um, conductor that we discussed before. 